Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, your usual host, your standard host, and I am delighted to have made the acquaintance of Gregory Moore today. Um, let me tell you a little bit about him before we dive right in. Greg is a Wall Street Journal sell- bestselling author of Real Freedom, Why Franchises Are Worth Considering and How They Can Be Used for Building Wealth. Now, he's managed restaurants, been a microelectric circuit engineer, which is just unassailably cool, in my opinion, and owned and operated dry cleaners, storage units, rental properties, and most importantly, Greg has helped hundreds of people invest in franchises. Greg, it's great to meet you. I'm really excited to talk to you. I haven't really talked with anyone with such a specific focus on franchises, so I'm really excited to dive into who you are and what you do and how you do it. <laughs> I appreciate that, Kevin, and uh, uh, thank you very much for allowing me to be on your show. I'm on- I'm honored. Thank you. Oh, well, let's, let's dive right in. I love to, I always love to start out by asking about like your superhero origin story, as I sort of cheekily refer to it, like how you got, how you got your start, not in your chosen business or your chosen focus necessarily, but particularly how you chose like coaching or guidance or to essentially how you, how you decided to give back and impact the world in the way that you've chosen to with this particular effort with franchise, the franchise maven, I think you're called, which I really, I really do like that. And in my head, I've been thinking about you as a franchise coach, which I'm like, you know, I don't know that I've ever talked to someone who I could, I could accurately describe as a franchise coach. So I'm curious how you decided to, to go about becoming the franchise maven. Well, first off, just to the coaching part itself, I, you know, I didn't realize, you know, that I could be a, a good coach or help people out until, you know, during my, my time as an uh, electrical, uh, microelectronic circuit engineer for Motorola Semiconductor, they were bringing in a new software system and uh, they liked the way I guess I talked or I spoke with people. So they put me in charge of helping out the engineers and showing them how to learn how to use the system. So I just started coaching them and I trained, you know, a few hundred engineers on that. And people were just like, yeah, I get it now. I get it. It's cool. And it was, it's a really good feeling when you teach people like that. And then they get it. The light bulb goes off in their head. So, you know, after a while I was in, you know, I was a restaurant manager for 15 years. I was a microelectronic circuit engineer for 15 years. Kind of showing my age there a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. But when I when I got out of the, uh, the corporate world, I decided that it was time to do something different on that. Because the corporate world after a while was just, you know, not not for me. When I first got a job as like most of us did back in you know the, the 70s or 80s or so i went to work for um, a restaurant chain now, of course fast food restaurants well, a lot of us get our, our start there and it was a taco bell and i actually ended up working for a master franchiser and she owned about 50 taco bells throughout sacramento california area and i helped her with her restaurants and i thought that was a, you know i didn't know at first but i learned that that was a franchise and she taught me that, you know, she owned the 50 of them and then I helped her grow those restaurants. So when I got out of the corporate world, I thought back to my my Taco Bell days and I thought, you know, that was a whole lot of fun. It was really simple and easy to operate those. So I decided mm-hmm. I would get into franchises. So I started clicking on the internet and finding all these different franchises, like all these different franchises of bone people calling me. I, and it was like, ah, but I finally ended up with a couple of franchise consultants mm-hmm. and they were just, they were really good. They said, okay, put everything on hold. Let's see where you want to go, see what you want to be. And they helped me find the right franchise. So I got into a telecommunications consulting franchise, again, being a consultant, helping business owners with their telecommunications needs. Did that for a couple of years. And then I was, but I kept thinking about what do those, the franchise consultants that I, I got involved with, I started thinking about what they do. And they got to work with all sorts of fascinating people throughout the United States and basically throughout the world, hmm. helping them change their lives for the better forever through franchising. And a lot of people just don't know franchise consultants exist. So I thought, you know, I think I like that because with the with the business consulting, it was great. But I had to drive around to businesses and talk to them in person. Whereas with the consulting, I got to work from the comfort of my own home, which was really great. Uh, a little mm-hmm. bit of discipline involved there with trying to, you know, with all the distractions from the home life. Uh, but once mm-hmm. you got through that and you got your schedule down, uh, I thought that would be the, just the greatest thing. Uh, in the world. So I started doing that about 10 years ago. And yeah, it has been great helping other people realize their dream uh, like I did with mine. It's so, it's, it's kind of so, it's, it's, it really is, it, it never gets any less amazing, no matter how many times I encounter it, both in my own life or in other people's lives. When you, when you have that moment, when you realize that you can, re, you can really have, like, I throw this word out kind of loosely, but like an exponential amount of impact on the world and people's lives for the good, for the positive, and also do it in a way that allows you to like, you know, quote unquote, live your best life, find the way that you 
you know, want to live, live well, live best, can be there for your family and yourself and also serve your chosen community very well. I mean, it's just you said that you talked about that light bulb moment earlier on and how how attractive that is to the, the whole con the whole idea of coaching. It's just beautiful when that when you watch that go off, when that light comes on behind someone's eyes and they get something. There's just nothing like it. And I just love that coaches understand that so well because they've they've experienced that light bulb from the inside. Like they have felt the warmth of that light going off and realizing, oh, I can I can do it this way, do more and not run myself ragged. I can actually be of great service and help without, you know, burning the candle at both, both ends, so to speak. <laughs> exactly right, Kevin. Exactly right. Man, I love that. You really are like a builder at heart. I love I love I it, it it almost like at first blush it might not make sense, so to speak, that you have that that um electric circuit engineer kind of experience in your background, but like as you tell your story, it's like it makes total sense. You love connecting. <laughs> yeah, very true. And, you know, as a restaurant manager, I love talking with people all the time. That was the best thing about it. Working 12, 14 hours a day, a day wasn't the best thing about it. But mm -hmm. when I was there, I got to talk with people all day long. So it really didn't seem like a whole lot of work because it was just so much fun connecting with others and getting to know them and their story. It really does have its own kind of momentum. That's something that it's so easy. It is easy to forget. It's also easy to remember, but it is easy to forget how much power you get from just connecting with people how much how much I, I i'm i'm accidentally making electrical engineering puns i don't mean to but it's just the way my brain works like you get this charge or a real charge from just connecting with people so that it's one of the only only ways that the restaurant business works because those hours do get very long and there's a lot that goes into it but man you do get a lot of energy from just connecting with people serving serving people and serving with them you know, where you're just where you're all like united behind the goal of, you know, providing service to others. It's it's just it really is. It I mean, it it, it is draining, <laughs> but it also is empowering and powerful. And I just I love the way that works. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. The long hours were kind of cringing sometimes. But you got those rushes where all the people came in and that really broke up the day a lot. And that was like <laughs> right on. Uh, it's uh, fond memories working at working in the service industry, but also I'm glad that they're memories. <laughs> for the most part it's like i i think it's much better in 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 retrospect than it was in the moment so i i, I like it. it's in the right spot it's settled in the right spot in my in my internal autobiography <laughs> that is so true so let's let's bring things to today and i kind of want to talk a little bit about like the nuts and bolts of your approach um and i tend to ask this as a two-parter because i feel like it really kind of gets at the heart of of everything that, that that a coach does who do you coach which we've kind of obviously already talked about um, and how do you coach them? Now, the who, obviously, you coach people who are interested in, in becoming, um, in getting into franchising. Um, but there might be a particular, I don't know, demographic or age range or obviously types of businesses. You have so much experience with restaurateurs and restaurateurship. Um, so the who being, if you, however specific or general you want to get with that, and the how being your methodology, your approach, how much of your coaching is one-to-one? -one? Do you do any sort of group coaching or masterminds? Obviously, you've written a book. I'm wondering if you have any other sort of like courses that you run or keynote speeches that you do. So yeah, basically, who do you coach and how do you coach them today? Great questions, Kevin. So <laughs> first one, who do I coach? You're right. Anybody that's interested in franchising, more specifically, who I coach is people are, that are a couple of different uh couple different demographics there. We've got the uh, corporate people. They're either looking down the road and seeing that corporate job's not too bad, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to get to where I want to be making the income that I'm getting today. So I need mm -hmm. something on the side. I need to do something either passively or semi-passively on the side to get me to where I want to be financially so that I can step away from this corporate job whenever I want to. Mm -hmm. And then there are those corporate refugees or just like, I'm done with it, like I was, you know, I'm <laughs> done with it. I want to go run my own business. Show me how I can do that. Show me where I can do that. And then another group, a lot of them are investors. I get a lot of real estate investors that do that. People that own other businesses, they either want to uh, expand out in their business as far as turning it into a franchise, converting it to a franchise, or they want to diversify, picking up another business, another franchise business. So they have a couple different sources of income on that. Uh, real estate investors are real good uh, because there's a lot of different things through the real estate world that you can do in franchising as well. That relates to uh, the real estate world. So those are real good. Uh, in my demographics, generally, probably 
35, 40 to on up to about 60, 70, 80, sometimes 80, which is kind of surprising. But I just just get a gentleman the other day who was 23, just out of college, and he started working at a job. And he's like, I don't want to do a job. I want to hmm. run something myself. So I do get, uh, lately, it's been more and more younger folks who just don't want to go into the corporate world and do that. Hmm. Now, how I do it is all one-on-one -on -one coaching on that okay. one. I sit down with people and franchising first off isn't right isn't right for everybody so i'm not here to convince them that franchising is the greatest thing since sliced bread um, it may be to them it may not be to them we will find out so my method is to go about educating people on what franchising is all about on mm -hmm. that one i look at where have you been where are you at and where do you want to be five to ten years from now so that i get a good feel for what kind of skill set they bring uh, into the picture so i can help find franchises that are uh, looking for people just like them on that. I get to know who the franchisers are looking for in a successful franchisee. Now, all I need to know is from you is Kevin is what skill set do you bring? Mm -hmm. That way I know which franchises are looking for people like you. And then I need to know your criteria for that. So it's all one-on-one -on -one because I'll ask a lot of uh, in-depth questions on that. Not something mm -hmm. I can do uh, in a group session necessarily. I did write the book. I was quite surprised that it made it to the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. That was amazing. <laughs> but it breaks down exactly the process that you and I will go through to not only find franchises that are a good fit for you, but then walk you through the process of investigating that franchise, what to look for, what questions to ask, what kind of funding do you need, what kind of franchise attorney do you need. Uh, so that way I could send that book out to whoever wanted it. You can buy it on Amazon if you want, or just send me your address and I'll send you a copy on that. But it's really just about educating people what franchising is all about. These are all questions that I get, I get all the time about hmm. franchising, what it's all about. So I just really wanted to educate people so they get a good feel for what it's all about. And then together, we did look at it. And we, as we go through the process, and I educate you on franchising, we meet, you know, seven to, every seven to 10 days as we're going through the process. We'll find out if franchising is right for you to begin with. If it is, which franchise is right for you? I really appreciate that so much. And I find that to be so common in so many coaches is how how deeply committed they are to finding the right fit and how that's that, that's like at the top, near or at the very top of their priority list. Like, let's figure out if this, if I'm the right coach for you, if what I'm coaching you in is right for you, in this case, franchising. Um, it's just, it's so, and it's, I mean, it's, it's obvious. You say it out loud and you're like, oh, duh, that's common sense. But it's so important to establish that right from the jump. Otherwise you'll be wasting both your time and energy and effort that could be better spent elsewhere. And then you get much faster. You arrive at the place where you, where the real work begins. Very good point, Kevin. That's exactly right. This coaching is all about, I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Get, getting, getting from, getting from the, the uh, intention into the, uh, into the nitty gritty and the, and the education and the action. I love it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good. A lot of education there. A lot of education. I never push it. I never try and sell it. Well, let's get you the information so you can make that informed decision one way or the other. I really also, I'm fascinated by like that, the story you told about the 23 year old who was like, you know, I can already kind of tell this corporate ladder thing isn't going to be for me. And I feel like there's at least, at least, well, at least anecdotally over the past couple of years, you're hearing more people thinking about is what I'm doing or is the path I'm currently on right? Whereas, you know, for different generations, it kind of occurs at different times in your life. Sometimes you've got to, you know, take five years, 10 years, 15 years to like kind of move along. And you're like, you're not unhappy, but you know, you kind of have this, this nagging sensation that maybe there's something else out there for you or you develop skills, your personality involved. I mean, evolves. We are living creatures. We're constantly growing and changing. We become weirdly different people as we age, even though we are the same person all the time. It's, it's kind of funny how that works, but that's a much bigger conversation maybe for another day. But yes. I love that that realization point and how that can how that can happen just about anywhere and how it commonly for at least something like as, as significant and as interesting as franchising tends to happen after someone's tried a path for a while. There's also, it's like just to anybody who realizes they would like a, a little more autonomy, a little more control, a little more intention, a little uh, to be able to put a little bit more of themselves into what they're doing and also to get more out of it. It's a it's a very interesting option that I'm not sure enough 
I'm not sure enough people talk about it. I was thinking I was going to say enough young people talk about it as an option, but I feel like it's just it's such an interesting and fascinating option again for the person with the right disposition and skill set to really really make it shine. You know that's true, and a lot of people when they think about franchising, Kevin, they just think about the ones that they see as they're driving yeah. down the road on the, the brick and mortar franchise. They don't realize that there's a whole another avenue out there, the services industry that you don't see. Uh, you a brick and mortar, you build it and they will come. General theme. It's right there in front of me. They see it. <laughs> Services industry, your clients don't know you exist until they need you. So you get a good franchise system to drive people to you when the need arises on that. Restoration, electrical, plumbing, senior care, tutoring, home services, anything around the home that you can do. All of those are about $150,000 investment, give or take, on those. Not a bad investment. Franchises are going to give you enough territory to get you into a good six-figure income great business to get into but a lot of people like you said kevin just really don't know about mm -hmm. all the options that are out there for them yeah it's like I'm, it's I, I barely understand i i know that there is such a larger world in franchising but that that's where my knowledge stops like i, I can i can sense that like vast ocean but it's like huh i don't really know a whole lot about that and just, you just rattled off all these industries that are either built on or infused with franchising and it's like that's that's just fascinating. I think, you know, honestly, like once I'm once I'm finished with my more professional responsibilities for the day, I think I might do a little a little Wikipedia deep dive. And I might. Well, honestly, I might just, you know, look up a little bit more about you and read about more what you have to say. And maybe I'll maybe I'll check out that book. I, I kind of want to keep I'm like I'm I'm personally just deeply, deeply curious about this entire thing. But I'd, we're getting close to our time. So before I let you go. I want to give you a chance just to say, well, it's another two-part question because sometimes these are different. They're usually aligned, but if anybody is half as curious as I am about franchising and what it's like in 2023, what it's been like over the last 40, 50 years and where it might be going in the future, basically they want to get to know you and they want, they want to hear what you have to say. Where can they learn more about you? Obviously we know where they can get the book, but where could they like just learn more about who you are, what you do, how you do it. And also if it's different, where can they best connect with you if they just if they just want to start a conversation? If they're like, I am I am interested, let's talk. Should they DM you on LinkedIn? Should they go to your website and book a Zoom call? How could they best connect with you? Go to my website, franchisemaven.com. That's franchise M A V as in Victor E N dot com or Greg at franchisemaven.com, or just pick up the phone and give me a call. 361-772-6401. If you got a lot of questions, give yourself a lot of time. I'll talk to you off and I'll tell you all about it. Answer anything you want. I love it. And especially to the young, to the younger audience, younger members of our audience out there, phones still can be used to make phone calls. It's, it's, it's true. It's true. <laughs> and it's still like you connect pretty instantly. Um, <laughs> I'd love to make that joke sometimes as I'm, you know, as, as a, as a middle-aged man myself, I'm like, I still do occasionally use the phone for phone calls. Um, but yeah, I'll put, I'll put all of this, the, the website, the phone number, your email address, everything will be in the show notes. Um, Greg, thank you so much for spending some time today. And you really gave me, you gave me a lot to kind of spark my curiosity, get, got my, got my learning bug going. So I'm definitely going to, going to dive in and see what I can learn about franchising in the 21st century. It's just fascinating. And so I'm just grateful you spent some time with me today. This was, this was really fun. It was, Kevin. I appreciate you having me on the show. And as you were saying, where is it going in the next few years? Well, there's a lot of people that. You know, a long time ago when people were out in the fields and then the industrial revolution took place, everybody was moving into the cities to take over and to be a corporation because corporations taught them or, or treated them well and mm -hmm. showed them a great path that were better than working in the fields. Well, after a while, that got kind of old. Uh, mm -hmm. Corporations weren't quite so friendly anymore. So now we get a lot of people that are looking to get into franchise and getting into their own business. They don't have the next best thing in their head what to do. So that's where a franchise comes in. I love it. Another another opportunity to find your find your best life, to pursue your passions and to be successful. Man, this was okay. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna have to rip the band-aid off because I can feel myself just like I have more questions bubbling up. And again, to the audience, if you are feeling half as much curiosity and interest as I am, do yourself the service of connecting with Gregory, of learning more about him and picking up the phone and chatting with him if you're really interested. And thank you for listening. Of course, we love that you're here. Thank you again to you, Greg, for spending some time with me today. Um, I might just have to have you back on out of just pure selfish curiosity, <laughs> just because I've enjoyed talking with you so much. And I feel like you have got one of the best brains to pick that I've talked to for the podcast. So yeah, thank you. And yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll see you again sometime soon around the bend. 
<laughs> I'm always here for you, Kevin. Anytime you're ready, just let me know and I'll be there. Ah, thank you, Greg. And thank you again to the audience. We will talk to you again very, very soon. Thank you.